not talk today because all of this topic about boundaries and what do you do for other people and when do you say no, when do you say yes. And like, this is a huge topic for, <laughs> for a lot of women and you have lots of famous personalities. And I know this is podcast, this podcast, we have lots of European listeners, just like I am European, but I don't think names like Oprah Winfrey and Brené Brown and all of these <laughs> giants in the space of women's empowerment and let's set healthy boundaries and let's have the courage to say no and even then all these like feminist approaches and waves of women are not here just to be uh, servants and maids and cooking and at home with kids but we have the right for some authentic expression and our own dreams and stuff well that's all great i'm i'm all up for that but what i realized and you tell me if that's true for you I realized that no amount of these kind of pep talks and all these empowerment books, um, mindset and self-development stuff and uh, amazing, inspiring affirmations on bathroom (laughs) mirrors, none of that really helps. At least it didn't help me much. And I realized why (laughs) only when I started doing this work of deeper (laughs) introspection and healing even my childhood trauma that I didn't even know I had because I had a happy childhood. Only then it all started making sense. So let me backtrack for those of you who are sitting there and this might be your first podcast episode and you're like, what the heck are you talking about? I came here (laughs) for some easy discussion about boundaries and my time and helping others. Like, what are you throwing childhood trauma here at me? it's okay, calm, <laughs> calm down, hold your horses. I'm going to explain everything in a, in a peaceful, <laughs> hopefully non-triggering way. But let me start by explaining even my thought processes since the beginning, because this inspiration, inspiration, this podcast episode was inspired by two sources. And usually when I get two hints, that's, I got it, that's enough. <laughs> I need to make a podcast episode about it. So the first one was, I was reading Czech news. I'm Czech, by the way, if you you didn't know. I uh, was reading some online news uh, and it was about holidays, how moms are burning out because typically Czech holidays, uh, also since the communist times, the summer holidays were always about you go somewhere, somewhere cheap, typically to Croatia, because you can get there by car and that's the first nearest sea and they speak similar language. But the fun part was that you pack the car full of not just holiday stuff, but also food. Because it's too expensive to buy food on holidays for a post-communist country. And so then the holidays of the women looked like basically everything they had to do at home but just the cooking and food preparation was even more difficult because you had one gas you know like the the cooker like the camping device equipment actually that you can heat up or prepare very simple meals on this little gas stove and so it takes more time and so while all the families either playing there on in the sea or taking a nap enjoying the holidays mom is the one who's stuck (laughs) cooking, preparing, washing, because everything is so much more difficult in these improvised cheap conditions. So basically she's the one who who would then need holidays (laughs) at the end of it, after coming back home, after she unpacks, washes, arranges everything back in its place, she would need a holiday just to recover from the holidays. And Why I'm saying that, because I always, even more than reading articles like this, I love reading the comments and the discussion underneath. And there were several men basically not attacking back, but commenting back saying, who asks her to do that? We are totally fine eating whatever bread and cheese that we buy in the supermarket. I didn't ask my wife to cook two weeks in advance and bring whatever wiener schnitzel and goulash. (laughs) I remember that's what my mom used to do (laughs) like 30, 35 years ago. They, women were cooking two weeks in advance to prepare meals that you could preserve, (laughs) you could take with you in the car, even without the fridge. And then you could just 
<laughs> heat up or prepare there. And so the men were commenting, nobody asked them to do that. We would be totally fine to live on bread and water and cheese or whatever for, for one week at the seaside. We are totally okay to do that. It's my wife who's freaking stressed out in advance. It's her who spoils her holidays and then makes all of us feel guilty and she puts it, she blames us because she's stressed out and she's tired and exhausted. And then she complains and ruins our holidays by what a victim she is and how come nobody helps her. And there were several comments of men like this. And I, it made me think because I realized like this, this was exactly the pattern in which I grew up. My mom was always going above and beyond of what was expected from her as, as a mom, as a woman, as a wife. She was always doing more, always being more, but then also she paid the price for it because indeed she was totally resentful, stressed out, burned out, self-sacrificing martyr. And surprise, surprise, as one of my clients just said yesterday, monkey see, monkey do. That's exactly what I turned out to be. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Now, why is this a challenge? Why is this a challenge and why? I don't know how about you. For me, it was impossible to get rid of it, even after I realized what was going on. Because I unearthed, if that's a word, I dig out the reason why. And the reason was it became part of my identity. My identity as a woman was heavily reliant on my need to feel needed. I'm intentionally giving you space and time to pause. <laughs> like Check in within you within yourself are you running on the same pattern who would you be if you woke up one day and realized that nobody needs you how would you feel no. did you just get like a <gasps> <laughs> uncomfortable <gasps> feeling how would that feel who would you be Could you still feel good about yourself? Would you still feel like a good person? Even if nobody needed you? Even if nobody needed your help? <laughs> because this is how deep it goes. And if you, if you participated, if you attended one of my mommy tantrum trainings where I explain, this is how it links with that childhood trauma. I gave you heads up already at the beginning of this podcast episode. Because it is a childhood trauma symptom. It is. 